Well, what's up again, nerd guys? Brian here at Three Chair. Welcome to the next episode of the People's Questions. Uh, we got a much, much bigger episode of questions. And before I begin, I would just like to apologize if there was any questions I missed in last week's episode. I was actually able to kind of go back and kind of add them to this video. So this video is going to be somewhat extensive, which you know, is not really a bad thing. And we even have a one or two or possibly even three newbies. So that's a plus in my opinion. So the first question comes from Virgil, the son of Sparta. You want to know if I were corrupted in the Resident Evil universe, personality wise, would I seek to use the virus to my own advantage or to transform? And which virus would I choose? Hmm. I guess I would use the virus to my own advantage. I don't really want to transform too much unless it's like a Wesker transformation in which I still look like a human. I just have all these enhanced abilities. I wouldn't want to turn to some gigantic monster that I wouldn't be able to walk out without being spotted. Um, which essentially means I would just need to be injected and then let like the tyrant creature kill me. Then I think I'd be okay at that point. Uh, but yeah, I probably and uh, I guess the virus I would use is probably the same thing that Wesker used. I can't remember which one that was. I'm, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the T virus. It was some sort of experimental virus that uh, Wesker injected himself. If, if, you, if you guys know what it is, please let me know in the comments down below, or maybe I should just look it up myself. Next question comes from Cyborg136. He wants to know, what are my thoughts on the second Tomb Raider trailer? You know, Cyborg, I actually didn't, I didn't watch it because I got a bad feeling about this film. I'm kind of, it's, just from what I saw in the first trailer, I could see what they were doing and I don't like it because it looks like it's going to eventually dwell into old school Tomb Raider, which I don't, I just do not like at all. I was never a fan of that version of Laura Croft. I was more a fan of this new version and it looks like they're trying to create a hybrid and I don't really like that. And they're even taking elements from Rise of the Tomb Raider and just adding into the first Tomb Raider game. And that's kind of something I don't like at all because those are two different games that have two different, very different tones. And I don't think they're gonna capture the essential element that made me really enjoy that first 2013 Tomb Raider reboot. So that's why at this point, unless a lot of people tell me that it's actually worth seeing, I'm probably gonna avoid that film. Next question comes from Cassidy J. Williams. You want to know, are there any movies that I've seen that I thought were going to be so bad, but they were good? Actually, Cassidy, there actually is one that does come to mind. Uh, believe it or not, um, I was actually one of the many individuals back in 2008 that actually thought that The Dark Knight was going to suck. Um, I was with everyone on the on the bandwagon trained about Heath Ledger's casting as the Joker. I was like, what the hell? How the hell do you go from a gay cowboy to the Joker? This is going to be horrible. Oh my God. And it ended up being probably one of the greatest movie experiences ever to the point where something happened to me at the end of the film that as far as I can recall, which I can recall a lot of things, has never happened again to me Ever. It was such a strange experience. It was a, it was almost a life-changing experience because I knew I had just experienced something that probably would never happen again. Next question comes from the first newbie of the episode going by the name of Vlad Xavier. Interesting name. And you want to know, I don't know if I watched the Fate series, but if I do, do I think that Karna or Gilgamesh would win in a one-on-one -on -one fight without noble fantasism? Actually, Xavier, I have never heard of the Fate series, so I don't think I can really answer that question. Next question comes from Ten Ryu Not Two. Hope I said that right. I was been practicing with that name. And you want to know, did I have any toys when I was a kid? If so, what were some of my favorites? Oh yeah, as a kid I had a bunch of toys. You know, I had Power Ranger toys, I had Spider-Man toys, um, you know, I had superhero toys. The interesting thing about me was that when I was younger, I had to I used to have this like fascination with biting plastic and so over time i would bite like parts of my action figures off i would like start with the feet and i would start with the handles like i don't know i just had this fascination with needing to bite stuff and so over time you know i would have to get new toys and i would bite them away and i don't know I, I, that's pretty much what all my um but that that's pretty much what the fate of all my toys that i had back then that is pretty much what happened next question comes from jake albin and you want to know what are my three arch, favorite arch types in Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG? And if you could create an arch type of my own, what would that be? I'm going to be honest with you, Jake. I have no idea what you are talking about. I'm more of an, of what I like to call a Generation 1 duelist. 
and I have to admit, I don't know what the hell is the state of Yu-Gi-Oh as of right now. I mean, I still have my three personal decks, which I haven't really had a chance to duel against anyone in like some years now, but the game of Yu-Gi-Oh has ch changed so much, it's unrecognizable to me. I, I, I mean, it's so scary. And, and it, it's 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 weird because I, I, I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, I would still play it now. It's one of the most best strategic games I've ever played. And it's not even about that anymore. It's not even about strategy anymore. It is just completely dissolved into some crazy mess. I mean, you, you couldn't possibly teach someone to play the game now because of just how crazy it is. That's why I refuse to play against any if, if i ever did find another duels play against i would refuse to play against anyone that did any of these pendulums summoning shit i am not a fan of xc summons i'm not a fan of synchro summons i don't even know what new summoning types they've they've evolved over the past five years i don't know what they've done but that is just it is completely broken the game into just this uh, unmitigated mess and it's something I just want no part of. And the funny thing is that they keep, is that Konami keeps releasing these like booster packs and they keep releasing these collector boxes that have cards that would be perfect for the old school way of dueling, but like are completely obsolete in, in this newer type of dueling. So it's, 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 it's a weird dynamic. Next question comes from Russell Farmer. He wants to know which of the female partners do I think Dante would most likely fall in love with? Um, and have a kid with Trish, Lady, or Lucia. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I don't think Dante would be interested in that at all. Uh, Trish is too much like his mother, so I don't really think he would be interested in her. Lady is. I mean, I mean, she even went on a whole little rant in the animated series as for how she, why she would never like Dante in that way. And Lucia, I think he's a bit old for her. I mean, at, by the time he met Lucia, he was in his 40s and she was in her 20s. So there's like a 20 year gap. So I don't think he would be interested in her either. So honestly, I don't think he would be interested in having a kid or getting with any of them. I think he just sees them as allies and that's it. Next question comes from Diadrive CJ. And you want to know, what are my thoughts and opinions on the whole Me Too movement and controversies? I'm going to be honest, Diet Drive CJ. Um, amongst friends and, and, and people that I know, there, there are two things you don't really want to talk about. You, you don't want to, I don't want to like the start of controversies unless it's something that affects me personally. And you don't talk about religion and you don't talk about politics. And this whole Me Too movement is just a topic that I don't really pay attention to much because it doesn't involve me at all. And it's just something that I, I'm, I'm guessing it's just the new trend that's going around. And hopefully it'll pass and a new trend will come. So as far as the whole Me Too movement is, I don't give a shit about it at all. I could care less what it is about, how it's operating. It doesn't affect me at all. So I really have no opinions or thought on the matter. Next question comes from Matt Cruz. You want to know what I think of the movie called Interstellar? Well, um, I rather enjoyed it. Uh, Christopher Nolan film, a space, you know, like, you know, space thriller, I would say. Um, I will say this. I was with this movie up until maybe the last 10 to 15 minutes. I think that if the movie had ended at a specific point, like 15 to 10 minutes before it actually ended, I think it would have had the bet. I think it would have had the proper ending. I wasn't really a big fan of like what it was trying to do in the last section of the film. But overall, I really did enjoy it. It was a visual marvel, absolutely. It was, I, I, and this is actually one of the few movies I actually enjoyed seeing in IMAX, so yeah. Next question comes from the Immortal Super Being. You want to know, name one character from Final Fantasy who could obliterate Dante and Virgil in a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two versus matchup. Explain the details why. <sighs> mm. Well, I... Honestly, I think any of the final bosses, I think any of the final bosses in any of the Final Fantasy games, I think they would probably take down Virgil and Dante outside of maybe, out, I, I, hmm, I think most of them would take them both out. I, I, I just think they're way, way too powerful. I mean, these are planet buster or, or even like dimensional breaker type of opponents and and I don't think Dante and Virgil really have any I, I don't even think that they're 
strength and demonic power would even allow them to even contend with opponents like that. I mean, that takes that takes entire teams that are extremely, extremely powerful in magic. And there's there's a big difference between magical power and demonic power. They operate very, very differently. And the fact that Dante and Virgil do not have magical powers, magical defenses, would put them at a serious disadvantage. The next question comes from... Yoda date, you want to know who is my favorite TNA wrestler? I don't have a favorite TNA wrestler because I don't watch TNA. Next question comes from Alu Serna, and you want to know, do I hate Death Battle? The answer is no, I don't hate Death Battle. I've liked a lot of their matchups. There's only a few that I can think of that I think had the wrong outcome, or their approach to it was wrong, or they clearly were doing it out of out of entertainment rather than trying to be analytical like I do my matchups. But other than that, I, I've enjoyed most of uh, De uh, Death Battle's matches. Next question comes from Black Rabbit of Inel, and you want to know, who is my favorite voice actor in any media? I'm going to have to go with David Hayther, uh, who is the voice of Solid Snake and Big Boss from the Metal Gear Solid franchise, simply because growing up, I think Solid Snake was really the first character that actually had a lot, a lot of voice acting and was like a pretty in-depth character and that has just continued throughout my all-time favorite uh, video game franchise of all time so um, yeah I'd have to go with him. Next question comes from the next newbie you want to know antimatter theory and you want to know Gilgamesh from Final Fantasy V onwards versus Sephiroth. Uh, That's a tough one. It depends on which Gilgamesh you're talking about, because they're they're all different. But if I could really, and, and it really depends on which Sephiroth you're talking about, because Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, he's a pure swordsman, and so I don't really think he would use magic all that much. But like Sephiroth from Kingdom Hearts, he does everything, so he's like a much more dangerous, and he's my personal favorite version of Sephiroth. That's a tough one to call, but if I could compare all versions of Gilgamesh, put them against all the different versions of Sephiroth, I think. Gilgamesh would probably win a majority of those type of matches, if I, just off the top of my head. Next question comes from Michael Beland. He wants to know, what is the main thing that hampered my experience when I first played the original Metal Gear game? Um, I guess you're talking about the original NES game, or the one that came out on the PSX. Uh, not the PlayStation, it was like this old machine. Um, I, I, well, I could say the only thing that hampered my experience was the fact that I didn't play it until, um, you know, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence came out because that was the first time any of us had a chance to play it because that game was so old. Uh, so it didn't really hamper my experience. I understood, I mean, I understood its limitations. Uh, I, I was really, really impressed with its sequel, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, which is some confused some people. Uh, but that, it, it was probably just the fact that it took so long for me to actually play it that kind of hampered my experience, but I still enjoyed it for what it was. And the last question of episodes comes from Abil Z, and you want to know, since I'm doing Inuyasha and Shishomaru versus Dante and Virgil tag match, which version am I going to use for this match? I didn't say I was going to do that. I said if I was proven wrong about my matchup, then I would do it, which I think I ended up being proven right. I said that I said that they were going to have Sephiroth win because they were going to come out all these different versions of him. And I said if I was wrong and they somehow made Virgil win, which I think he would still win, I would do that matchup. But even if I was going to do that matchup, the problem is is that it it, it would just take too many times because there's not different versions of Inuyasha and Shishomaru. It's all one version, it's all one canon, whether you go to the games or the manga or the anime, it's all the same person. And so you would have to dwell into that enormous amount of information. For Dante and Virgil, obviously I'm gonna stick with the originals because the DMC DMC, that is not Dante and Virgil. That is Bob and his bullshit brother, Steve. And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a heads up. Steve will be making an appearance very, very soon in my verse series matchup. So keep your eyes out for that. And with that, that's all the questions that you guys answered for this episode. I'd like to thank all of you guys for making this episode possible. If you guys have any more questions you'd like me to answer, be sure to type them in the comments down below. But make sure you get the interview before next Wednesday before I start filming this. And like always, thank you guys for watching. You're awesome, and I will see you next time.